Okay, do you think the flashbacking is a very popular uh, device in films? Yes. Yeah, they use it to suggesting you know uh, a kind of taking you back to a particular time and when they do flash forward which is more experimental that generally they do but then we did Kubrick that famous cut today and it flashes forward skipping thousands of years of progress in human civilization you understand now so flashing forward means prolapsis so therefore pro and analapsis means flashing back flashback So, starting off with one scene and then suddenly going jumping to something that has already happened. So, that is Anna and when you are going forward and you are skipping a few that is pro. So, flashing forward. Okay? So, now <coughs> I am on chapter the last few pages of chapter uh, 35, last few paragraphs chapter 35. Who is she in conversation with? Good. Countess Gemini, who is also Osmond's uh, sister. And the last few lines. You are very brilliant, you know. That is the way you are always spoken of. You are an heiress and very good looking and original. Now, only um, a novelist can use a word like uh, an adjective like that. Good looking, yes. You are an heiress, yes, and you are rich, all these things, but you are an original work of art or you are an original character. This uh, only a novelist like Henry James would use uh, in connection uh, with his heroine or with his lead character. You are an original and that is what is more important. See, this is the way. So, we go back to how important characterization is in Henry James. Do not forget these things. We have been talking about the the foregrounding of characters in Henry James, right? So how important characters are, and therefore, and this is there are various perspectives, points of view about Isabel Archer. She is described by various people at various points. Do we agree? Anu, do we agree to that? Isabel Archer, if she is at the center of the novel, she <coughs> is. We do not have just one unidimensional view of her. We are given different perspectives. There are several perspectives uh, about Isabel Archer. Do we agree to that? Can you give me some other examples? Like Gemini says, you are thought of. That means, there is a general perception about it. Okay. Is there anyone else who thinks like that about her? Ralph Tatchett. Okay. He also regards her with certain degree of amusement because she is someone who is going, he is dying. We have already seen that, that he dies at the end and in the novel also the last, uh, the uh, penultimate chapter of the novel is about Ralph's death. He dies and um, then she is in mourning and that is quite a symbolic kind of a mourning. She is in mourning for the rest of her life. She mourns, okay, that is her destiny. So, character is destiny. You remember that that is what we have been talking about of all Henry James's characters. That is how he describes his theory of characterization. Character is destiny, character is plot. Okay. If there is a, so, the novel is like this because she is like this. This is the, the, this kind of woman can have only this kind of plot. Okay. That is the idea. Our family is very good, you know. Osman will have told you that and my mother was rather distinguished. She was called the American Corinne, but we are dreadfully fallen I think and perhaps you will pick us up. I have great confidence in you. There are ever so many things I want to talk to you about. I never congratulate any girl on marrying. I think they ought to make it somehow not quite so awful a steel trap. So, at the, you know, even before she is marrying, we are told she is getting into a steel trap and I never congratulate a girl on marrying. Do not you think this is quite uh, uh, revolutionary for those times? Yes, 
if you say today to a modern woman perhaps yes okay but uh, something like this happening uh, uh, in a novel that was published 150 years ago this is quite uh, a daring feat i suppose pensy otten to hear all this but that's what she has come to me for to acquire the tone of society there is no harm in her knowing what horrors she may be in for when first i got an idea that my brother had designs on you i thought of writing to you to recommend you in the strongest strongest terms not to listen to him so that's a sister talking about her brother then i thought it it, uh, it would be disloyal and i hate anything of that kind besides as i say i was enchanted for myself and after all i am very selfish by the way you won't respect me not one little mite and we shall never be intimate i should like it but you won't some day all the same we shall be better friends than you will believe at first my husband will come and see you though as you probably know he is on no sort of terms with osman he is very fond of going to see pretty women but i am not afraid of you in the first place i don't care what he does in the second you won't care a straw for him he won't be a bit at any time your affair and stupid as he is he'll see you you're not his some day if you can stand it i'll tell you all about him do you think my niece ought to go out of the room now what sort of uh, introduction is this osmond has only two relatives one pensy who is very docile meek we have already been introduced to her uh, fleetingly and then this sister of his yes uh, what what picture of osmond is uh, painted before us you see um, osmond is never talked highly by anyone did you notice that nobody speaks well of osmond except madame mal yeah even his own sister tells uh, isabel archer on the eve of her wedding that uh, i should have warned you okay but then anyway i was enchanted by you eh, nevertheless so i thought okay let it go let's see what comes out of so for everyone don't you think it's a spectacle now okay this marriage what is this marriage going to offer to people like us who will uh, who are going to be mute spectators okay and in the short clipping that we just witnessed we know what sort of marriage was this all right okay and uh, what sort of person is countess jamini now okay uh, she as she says i know that we won't be intimate because even though i might prefer it you won't so uh, as silly as she is she realizes what how the how other people was she also says that one day we will become close okay that means she has already anticipated that when that and uh, if you have read the novel and it's just a spoiler we know that finally it's countess gemini who reveals the dreadful secret that madam mal is pansy's real mother biological mother and gilbert osmond happens to be the father okay so that is it's that kind of a relationship and this is revealed to us to isabel archer through countess gemini okay so um, what we are looking at is a you know um, look at the motley of women and characters all, all around yeah. kinds of diversity that henry james presents to us diverse characters all kinds of women you have all kinds of men also here okay different kinds but yeah, the, you look at the characterization of women here and you feel how how did he probe into the psyche of women so well so minutely after all he is a man how did he know women so well interestingly his uh, mentee edith wharton when you read the age of innocence you will be amazed at how well he understands the male psychology okay and this is a the, i mean people generally say that this is a feminist writer and therefore she writes understands women so well 
but here you are seeing something other, something else happening. Okay, now, chapter 36. One afternoon of the autumn of 1876, during toward dusk, a young man of pleasing appearance rang at the door of a small apartment on the third floor of an old Roman house. On its being opened, he inquired for Madame Merle, whereupon the servant, a neat, plain woman with a French face and a lady's maid, lady's maid's manner ushered him into a diminutive drawing room and requested the favour of his name. Mr. Edward Rozier said the young man who sat down to wait till his hostess should appear. Now, who is this new character? Yes, early, but and not like this. Okay, now, he is given to us through a different, uh, um, in a different setting. Three years have lapsed. Okay, and yes, yeah, so this is what I was telling you. This is an instance of prolapse. It's, it's flash forward. You, you also, we are not going to learn about the details of this marriage. Whatever happened in these three years. Later on, someone will tell us, oh, she had a baby. I think Madame Merle tells Edward Rosier that there was a child. It is a pity that she could never have a child. Although there was a child, a baby boy who died, who lived only for six months. Okay. So, all those details are given to us in just passing. Why? Henry James is not really concerned with the uh, nitty gritties of the plot, these things. Okay. He is now only going to present to us how these characters respond to these tragic happenings in life. Okay. So, Edward Rosier's character, the reader now again look at this. Um, point of view technique, Henry James. And now, he, Henry James is talking to you. The reader will perhaps not have forgotten. So, he is again drawing his our attention that, see, I have already told you uh, something about this character before. So, the reader will perhaps not have forgotten that Mr. Rosier was an ornament of the American circle in Paris. But it may also be remembered that he sometimes vanished from its horizon. He had spent a portion of several winters at Pau, and as he was a gentleman of constituted habits, he might have continued for years to pay his annual visit to his uh, to this charming resort. In the summer of 1876, however, an incident befell him which changed the current not only of his thoughts but of his customary sequences. He passed a month in the upper Engadin and encountered at Saint, at Saint Moritz a charming young girl. To this little person, he began to pay on the spot particular attention. Who is this girl? Pansy. Okay. So, now, why are we being told all these things in this way? And reader may recall, well, this was quite a revolutionary literary style. Today, you may come up every second novelist uses this device, not when this was. So, uh, so occasionally he is taking an omnipotent point of view. Okay. And here, what is this technique called? When the author is directly, yes, yes, when the author is, so there is a breaking the fourth wall, yes, we are still in uh, cinema mood, okay. in the intrusive authorship. Yeah, the intrusive author. Hmm? It's like it's one of the features of narratology, intrusive author. So the author is because I'm interested in why he is talking to you, reader. You know that we have been introduced to you. What is he? He is directly addressing the reader because he is telling us that don't forget I am the author. Okay, I am the author. You are the reader. Reader, you must have. You, yeah. So, these were, are the uh, literary characteristics of Henry James experimenting with point of view. As in, did we start earlier and not this intrusive authorship? Very, uh, it was not there always. Okay. You know, you get such examples only in Henry James where he experiments with all sorts of um, points of view in a single novel. 
So, he can he can give you multiple perspectives in here. So, we are we have been talking about the beginning of modernism remember? Yeah, and, and was there in Chaucer be considered to be intrusive no, artist? Is it is first person and also we are talking about novel? It is more or less yeah verse, okay, but in novels Henry James is foremost because he is the one who started. You have you also have example of someone like Lawrence Stern. Are you familiar with Law? You I am sure you are. Lawrence Stern and his and his good Tristram Shandy. Yes, and this is also. Isabel's first appearance after three years. So, we last saw her in conversation with Countess Gemini, we see her now and she is a changed person now. Now, at this point again uh, if you apply the theories of new criticism here, okay, so um, you know R. P. Blackmer of course uh, and he wrote this essay, he was one of the foremost new critics along with Eliot and other people. And he observes that James' work constitutes a great single anarchic rebellion against society, against the laws of society in the combined names of decency, innocence, candor, goodwill and the passionate hero uh, heroism of true vocation. By the standards of those times, he was considered a revolutionary because uh, and also an anarchist. And therefore, I uh, presented to you this example of Countess Gemini, okay, who is so bold in her total denunciation of the institution of marriage. We are uh, already familiar with uh, the features of new criticism. We have been doing it for quite some time, you know what a signifier and signified. So, I am not going to get too much into it. But then here again as I started with the introduction, then let me take, take back you to his original point of inspiration which was George Eliot's Middle March. Also Daniel Durand uh, to some extent, but Middle March to a large extent and that is what when we talk about, when we look at Isabel's predicament after marriage. So, I am not going to get deep into it, I am just assuming that you have finished reading the novel or you are going to finish reading it soon. Okay. So, but what sort of a person th does she emerges in spite of being warned by everyone including Osmond's own sister about the marriage, the pitfalls and the dangers of getting into an alliance like that. Why does she still get into it? Because Henry James wants to look at a particular sort of woman, not every woman but a particular, so she is not a genre, she is not a genreic woman. Please understand that therefore, she is called an original woman, an original kind of character. Okay. So, she is not like every woman who is just waiting for a man otherwise Lord Warburton would have been the ideal choice. No? Okay, so, why, is, why are we interested in her at all? We are interested in her because we in before our eyes we see shattering of certain kinds of ideals that a certain kind of woman upholds and cherishes. This is the idea. So, and this is the, I, the, the original germ of this idea came from George Eliot's Middle March. Are you aware of George Eliot's Middle March to some extent? Okay. And how this woman who thinks she is a very idealist kind of a uh, girl marries this elderly dilettantish professor thinking ho hoping that you know uh, she is going to make a difference to his life okay but she can't okay what happens eventually is that how she is crushed by his coldness and by his indifference and that's what happens to isabel archer also so she is ex exploited financially as well as emotionally and that's what she is we understand okay all right. So, um, coming to the end of the novel, you can uh, refer to uh, Middlemarch also uh, for the character of uh, Sir James uh, Chatham and Henry James bases the character of 
Lord Warburton and the radical Ladislaw in uh, Middlemarch comes to us as uh, the good hearted man, the Caspar Goodwood who is very prosaic, absolutely unimaginative, unromantic and believe it or not I mean at the end of the novel, uh, the no yeah he comes back and he offers Isabel and out and that you have seen in the clipping also, but she uh, she refuses and she runs away. Why? Does she? Is it so emotional? Is it so banal an explanation that she can, cannot break away from a marriage? Looking at the kind of person she is, she could have easily called it off and she has uh, someone uh, uh, completely respectable and a decent person waiting for him, for, for her. She goes back for pansy. Necessarily she goes back for pansy. She, she wants to face, yes, Ma social conventions, yes, Pans love for pansy, yes, but she could have provided for pansy. She has enormous wealth, yeah, so she is not someone that if she leaves her husband, she will be penniless. It is not that kind, but if she, what she wants to do is now she wants to bear the consequences of her actions. She knows that she herself has closed on all the doors for her, herself and there is no way out. She has closed those doors for herself. So, although there is an opportunity there to escape, she would not take it because that is the kind of character that is. If she takes the way out, what sort of a character would emerge? It is like, yeah, it is like inconsistent with whatever we have been doing so far. This woman is willing to take and she is also a gambler, we have been told like her father. So, she gambles with her luck, with her destiny, not with, of course, she also places money, but money is never her, the driving force in her life, okay. But she has her ideals, okay, and she get, takes a gamble, she takes a chance on her ideals. She does not want her ideals to be compromised, that is the idea. So, she knows that it is her destiny to suffer in a loveless marriage and she is willing to do so, which is very uh, courageous to portray at, in a uh, novel like that. Because you see, you have you all are also aware of Edith Wharton's The Age of Innocence. She is, uh, Countess Olanska feels suffocated in a marriage and she leaves him. Newland Archer cannot marry a divorcee, that is another matter. You cannot marry a divorcee, you are already engaged to the divorcee's cousin, you cannot break that kind and he is a man who upholds traditions. So, it is coming together of two opposite kinds of characters, but it is not like uh, divorce was taboo, but it was uh, it was not like it did not happen. So, she, she had, she is offered a way out, but she does not take it up because that compromises her integrity and that is the point. Um, again coming to George Eliot's middle march, at the end of the novel, George Eliot releases her uh, heroine from a bad choice. What happens to that character? Does she divorce him or does he die conveniently? So, James, however, James decides that she should stay back in whatever choices she has made, okay, that is the kind. All right. So, um, I do not want to, although uh, there is quite a bit of novel uh, still remains in remaining to be done, but then I think we have spent enough time on this year and you do get a rough idea of what this work is all about. We, you should also approach the novel through the prism of realism, psychological realism, what else? Point of view, narratology, okay. So, narratology especially through point of view. Okay, so, these are the features that you should be concerned with. And of course, you also know Henry James and his uh, literary criticism as embodied in the art of fiction. So, please take a look at that also.